Okay. So the whole gill lens um, for Canon DSLR is a cheap, less than twenty dollar uh, whole cheap molten plastic made lens uh, made from made by Holga. Um, Holga is uh, is a brand uh, from Hong Kong, um, and this lens is supposed to resemble the one on the legendary um, Holga 120, um, which is here. Uh, this old plastic uh, camera. I will review that later. Um, so yeah. To go back, yeah. Um, this lens uh, has basically a 60 millimeter, millimeter f.8.0 <laughs> aperture and has a single meniscus element inside for the focusing. Focusing is done uh, via those pictograms. Um, it does look like the original, so it's an EF mount, but you can adapt it to anything you want. Um, it, the indication for focusing is not very useful, as you can obviously check in the viewfinder. Uh, and you will get uh, soft focus and chromatic aberration uh, you had on the original lens. Um, looking at the back, however, of the lens, we can see there's some pinholes, small pinholes around the main aperture. Maybe for sensor compensation for adaptation, I, I don't know. The, the original, basically, let's go check. Doesn't seem to have those, uh, those behind when we took hard to see, but it seems there's only one aperture on the original. But anyways, um, we're, it looks toy lens enough, that's for sure. And so let's go check a few, a few examples. Um, you could use it with film, I, I didn't do tests with, a, with an SLR, but yeah, let's go see the example. These are my two first images um, on the left that's inside, but really with uh, full daylight. So I was, it's a, we saw a Canon EOS 6D um, uh, body. Um, yeah, kind of, uh, obviously there's a problem with, uh, with the, the covering of the sensor. Um, we definitely see the small pattern of the, those small pinholes uh, uh, that were uh, standing around the main uh, aperture. Uh, we do see that pattern, so it makes it kind of very stylized. Um, so it's obviously not made for a full frame uh, sensor, um, but the middle, the image in the middle, is actually seems quite interesting um, per se. Uh, and the image on the right, that's uh, by night. Again, we still see the, the periphery. This um, it's definitely not covering the whole sensor correctly. So might be a creative lens, but yeah, that's that doesn't really work out how, how I expected. Um, and if you look at it, here's the three examples: uh, focused to infinity on the left picture, uh, focused at the closest focal distance uh, on the right, uh, and uh, an in-between uh, position. You definitely see that. While you almost don't see this effect on the borders on the infinity image. And that, and you definitely see that the focus has some something to do with the quality of the the the, the finesse, the details in the middle of the image on the left. We can clearly see the the details on the windows, which we lose when the focus is not on infinity on the right picture. Um, it's definitely a lens made for uh, an APS style uh, sensor. Um, and so I went back to a, a Canon EOS 7D, which is not a full frame. Um, basically APS-C sized sensor and here we can see uh, focused to infinity on the left picture focused at the closest uh, distance on the right uh, here it works out way better uh, in terms of the, this um, radial effect um, and actually we do get something interesting suddenly we I think we get something that's close to what we for those who know the results of a of a Holga camera a film camera uh, we we do get that feel. Uh, very interesting. Here again two examples. Um, um, yeah, very analog looking image. Kind of lo-fi, but at the same time it's really dependent on the sensor. That's an old sensor, so there's definitely some grain uh, uh, from that old sensor, but again those two next images um, with, this, with such a, a closed aperture uh, you can really go to long exposures and get some interesting interesting results like here. Um, I believe it gives a good indication of, of what this lens is capable of. Um, yeah, actually, uh, 
starting to use it a little bit more uh, on an APS field of view, um, kind of slowly got into me. And as you can see, those two other examples, we definitely get the different character and the resulting image. Um, on the left, the colors are, are great. The geometry is actually pretty good. Um, definitely the definition is, is kind of weird. It's a plastic lens. It's, it's definitely lo-fi in that sense. But you can try lots of things. It's, uh, for example, the image on the right, um, that's with flash and the long exposure after. Um, yeah, very creative, very creative lens. And, and actually, I've, I've extensively tried it also with a full-frame sensor before. Um, on many cameras, you can, you can reduce the field of view in your, in your viewfinder. Um, and, but if you use the full frame to infinity uh, in low-light situation, you will get things like this. And that's, that's on a Lake SL2 modern body. So I'm pretty sensitive in, in low light, um, and I have a inside body image stabilization. But this lens actually packs quite some punch for that kind of stuff. And and one interesting thing too, uh, which comes from probably all those small pinholes around the main aperture, is you get if you do long exposures, kind of having those light paintings looks to it with some even if there's even if it's blurry you will get all those little uh, pinholes will generate their own lines so you're going to get something very different from a pinhole lens or from a usual single aperture lens so that's also a field that's open for creativity and for experimenting with your with your camera and with this lens so yeah very interesting result i, I believe for a really cheap lens um, if you're into if some of those pictures I showed you before, uh, if you liked them, uh, I'm sure you're going to find this lens fun. Uh, it's adaptable on many uh, camera bodies, obviously, because it's meant for this. If you have a sensor that's closer, um, if your flange distance is closer than a usual uh, a DSLR from Canon, uh, you should find uh, an adapter uh, for your camera. And um, yeah, I would highly recommend it for the, for the price and for the fun it, it provides. Yeah, I, I don't have much more to say about this lens. Uh, um, obviously, this is a colored version. Uh, most of the time, you find the black version, and it's definitely a fun experience uh, uh, if you want to do things a little bit more creatively and differently. Um, so yeah, for the price, it's an interesting piece of kit. Um, yeah, and. Maybe you'll want to try the real Holgao once uh, with some film. Mm -hmm.